The only thing worse than getting up at 5 a.m. is not getting up when you said you would and then feeling the guilt of disappointing yourself. And though I've been doing pretty good with all of my resolutions for this year, I do notice that my study and my fitness could be lacking. But we're gonna fix that today. I had so much fun on my trip, but I realized I really need to get back to studying if I'm gonna meet my New Year's goals. So if you're also behind on your goals, this video is for you. To get back into the groove of things, I really just wanna focus on review. So right now I'm gonna go over all of my notes, all of my flashcards, and watch a little bit of LingoPie. If you haven't heard of LingoPie, it's basically a streaming service for language learners. They have nine different languages. They have Japanese, Korean, Spanish, Russian, French, Chinese, German, Portuguese, and Italian. But don't worry if you don't see your language there. They add about two to three languages every year, which is so nice. I obviously use it for Japanese and it's been so helpful. Now on there, I'm currently watching Swimming in the Dark and it's about this guy he works at a supermarket he's a security guard and he kind of hates his life right now but then he falls in love with his mysterious new neighbor and it's really funny and like good and I love seeing their interaction and it genuinely feels like Netflix but the reason why I love it is because when I'm watching the show not only does it show the English subtitles but it also shows the Japanese ones and when I don't know words I can just click on the word and it automatically makes flashcards for me so it's been so helpful it feels like I'm learning but like in such a fun way I also really enjoy that when you're watching you can slow down the speed so I have it on no vice so it's about 0.75 speed which is pretty good for me I can't go any faster than that right now but I'm allowed to like see the vocab words here press a word that I don't know it tells me how to pronounce it and it saves it as a flashcard so it's been so helpful there's also another function that I love it's called auto pause all you have to do is press it and like enable it then from there after every single sentence that's said it pauses the show automatically for you so you get to practice pronunciation to see if you're saying it like a native speaker and on top of that you can link this with your Netflix account if you also want to watch the shows from Netflix and selected shows are also linked with LingoPi so then you can use these resources with shows that you already watch on Netflix so I honestly think it's such a great resource now if you also want to try LingoPie you can just use my link down below it gives you a seven-day free trial and other benefits so I highly recommend it um, it's just another fun way to learn a language without feeling like you're just learning grammar in a textbook or something like that and I genuinely use it all the time so we're gonna start that now and then I'm also gonna review flashcards and then I feel like from there I can actually study study for real. I feel like recently I've just been like studying a little bit and then taking a break to the point where I forget everything that I studied and then I have to review everything that I studied once again and I just feel like I'm never moving forward because I constantly take breaks and it's kind of frustrating me because I really am trying to take my language learning seriously this year and I've just been getting in my own way which is the most frustrating thing possible because it's like I cannot point the finger at anyone else but myself like I can't be mad at anyone for where I'm at in my progress but myself so it's like Ah, I'm so frustrated with myself, but um, I'm trying to give myself grace. I'm trying to find the things that trigger me to procrastinate and things like that. See myself doing it and then try to fix that and revert from that bad habit and try to make it into something that's a good habit. And obviously like bad habits take a long time to revert back into good habits. So I'm trying to give myself patience, but I am a bit frustrated with myself lately because I just know I can be doing better. And it's just like, you lose self-confidence when you can't trust that you're doing what you're supposed to do and you can't trust yourself to do what's best for yourself. You know what I mean? So I'm kind of feeling down in the dumps, but we're going to power through it today. And I'm really hoping that studying will really boost my confidence and boost my momentum so that I can continue going on throughout the rest of the week studying and being productive. If you're also feeling this way, again, don't forget to give yourself grace. We are human, sometimes we are just overwhelmed and it's okay to take a step back at times, but you have to realize if this is a real goal that you have in your life and something you genuinely want to accomplish, you have to like put in some boundaries, you have to be a little bit more disciplined and try to be consistent. And just tell yourself, well, I'm being consistent. I'm forcing myself to think about future me because this is a goal that I genuinely want. And I just think giving yourself that reminder allows you to like put yourself in the right headspace to grind and like put in the work and do the things that aren't always so fun. So I'm just putting myself in that headspace. <laughs> to study. I'm pretty happy with that. I got through an entire show. 
I didn't realize how many like colloquial, colloquial, I swear I can speak my language, colloquial phrases that I didn't know. I feel like I know more formal Japanese, which is nice in some instances, but I definitely need to know how to do conversational conversations. What? Conversational speech. So <laughs> that's what I'll be working on later, but I do want to go over my flashcards. I feel like if I study these 1000 main words and I know them like as well as I know some English words, then I think that I'll be able to understand a lot of the Japanese moving forward and I won't have to depend so heavily on closed captions. And I'm hoping that will help me with my listening skills as well as talking. Um, talking is still my kryptonite. Uh, it makes me so frustrated because the whole point of learning a language is to be able to speak. But I have this deathly, insane, irrational fear of speaking because Obviously, no one wants to look silly. And when you're first learning how to do something, it's like learning how to walk. I'm, I feel like I'm Bambi while I'm talking. I'm stumbling over words. I'm not confident. It takes me forever to get a sentence out. And that like makes me anxious because I just keep thinking that the person listening to me thinks I'm an idiot or I obviously am not as skilled as I want to be. And I know that that's completely irrational. And my tutor that I see once a week, she always tells me like, when we hear someone trying to speak English, we're so understanding, generally most people are, uh, so understanding and like we're proud of them for being able to speak another language. And you have to think of yourself as that way. Like, because I know when someone's trying to speak to me and I can tell that English is not their first language, I am so patient, I'm so understanding. I'm like trying to help them get out whatever they're trying to say. But for some reason, when it's me on the other foot, I just feel like I'm wasting someone else's time. I start sweating. I'm like, oh my God, how do I put this together? Like, I desperately think that everyone learning a language needs to be speaking every week. So I tutor with my tutor once a week and we speak. But when I tell you I get so anxious before them and I get so scared, I'm not even joking. And it's just because I have this fear of speaking. So if you're also learning a language, please let me know in the comments below, how do I get over this fear? And it would help me greatly and maybe it can help someone else because I will never move forward if I can't get over this irrational fear. And I know that you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable and you have to look silly sometimes. I think that that is where you grow the most. And I know this intuitively. I just need to make my brain and my body use that information, like actually adhere to that. So I think with practice, the more I do it and the more I learn these words and get more comfortable with them, naturally I'm gonna be able to feel a little bit more confident with saying them. It's just, I haven't gotten to that point yet. And it's a little like disheartening because it's like, I want to be so much further than I am, but I'm not gonna stress myself out about that. I'm just gonna take it at my pace and just try to learn as I go. As long as I'm consistent, I will naturally get better. You will never work at something consistently and not improve even slightly. So just reminding myself of that has been super helpful with like my anxiety. So I encourage you to do the same. I hope, you know, some of these tools and messages like get to you because I think when you're learning a language or something as hard as a language, just trying to get yourself through something that you know is difficult. If you're in school, if you're studying for something, if you're trying to level up in your career, you can get so down and out because usually those tasks are isolating, right? Like you have to put in the work. You can't do this with a group. Sometimes you can, but like most of the meat of that work you're doing on your own. And it can be hard to motivate yourself to actually do those things but if you just realize you're taking it one step at a time as long as you're doing it every single day you're going to improve so <laughs> i just need to listen to myself at this point <laughs>
feel like I'm getting my mojo back. I'm so happy with everything that we were able to accomplish. I got a lot of things done and like starting with watching the shows first, it really eased me in because I was feeling a little bit overwhelmed, but now I feel like I have a manageable plan. I realize I remember more than I thought I did, which is really nice. So now I just want to take a reading break. I am currently reading the second book in the Harry Potter series. Guys, I am so sorry, but our February TBR Let it ride. out the window. <laughs> I just want to read Harry Potter. It is so good. It is so good. I literally have I think only 50 minutes left in the second book and I'm at the part where he just figured out what the Chamber of Secrets is and guys every second and I know that this is like an older book I know it was written for children but when I tell you I gasp every other page it's not even funny like there's so many twists and turns I don't even see coming and I keep trying to like figure it out and she gets me every time the story is so good and I realized too I thought I would really like Hermione just because I guess she's the only girl and you know when you're a kid you always say oh I'm the girl I'm this person I'm whatever so because I never watched it as a kid I always assume I would be like Hermione or I would love her but I'm realizing <laughs> Ron is so funny like I'm audibly laughing out loud by the things that he says or his reactions to things because I feel like he reacts to things the way that I would react to things and I just I've been loving their duo him and Harry and like how Harry doesn't back down and like he's trying to save everyone and they're just like good kids you know and the way the story is unfolding I swear to god I just because I've never read the books or watched the movies everything feels so fresh to me and it's I'm honestly grateful nothing was ever spoiled for me because I'm having such an authentic such a nice experience to it and I'm always on the edge of my seat like I feel like if you skip one sentence in these books something crazy happened so I have to pay attention but I also want to read really fast because I want to know what's happening like I want to know what the mystery is before they tell us you know and I just think this series is incredible i can't believe it's taken me so long to read it so now when i'm studying or i'm doing something else i just think about reading this book so while i was studying i was like okay 30 more minutes and you get to read or while i was cleaning i'm like 30 more minutes and you get to read or whatever and i love that because i haven't had to do that since i was a kid there was no series that like made me react this way since i was a kid which is just so astonishing because I honestly thought that this book, this series, would be something that I aged out of. Like, that's kind of why I just allowed it to be on the back burner. Once I missed my time to read it as a kid, I just assumed like, well, that's it. I can't read it anymore. But now reading it as an adult, a big adult, like I'm still feeling like I'm getting lost in this world. And that's so magical. And it's making me so happy. So I just want to get out and read a little bit. believe what just happened to me I just had like the best experience so I was sitting in Paris forget reading and then after I was reading I just wanted to take a break and just review my notes again so then I started studying Japanese and there was a <laughs> 
Japanese uh, like businessmen were sitting next to me and they were speaking Japanese and then they were like, are you studying Japanese? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and then they just told me all these really cool experiences and like these um, teaching English opportunities in Japan. And I gave them my email address and also my YouTube information. So they emailed me and uh, one of the guys, his wife is actually a doctor, or I'm sorry, his wife is a scientist, but she speaks Japanese. And they're gonna try to like get us to meet so that she can teach me Japanese and I can kind of teach her English. And we both like love science. So it was just such an amazing opportunity. I can't believe that just happened. I like, what? Ah! I'm so happy. That was such a cool experience. Oh my God. And they were so nice. They gave me so many resources I want to look up and like different opportunities to live in Japan for years on end without worrying about residency. It was just such a great experience. They were so kind to me. So I just feel like rejuvenated energy. And I feel like it's also given me like an extra boost of like, I need to learn this language so I can get the heck out of here and go and enjoy my like life there, you know? And I don't want to go there without actually knowing the language. So that was such a like nice little surprise. And not only that, when I came home, guess what was waiting for me? Boxes of books. But guys, I didn't buy these books. Shaughnessy sent me over three boxes of books. Let's just give her a slow clap. She is the book bestie I've always wanted. Thank you again, Shaughnessy, if you're watching this. You are so beyond sweet. I love you so much. I cannot wait till we see each other again. This is unbelievable. And I don't know everything that she sent me. So I already opened one box because so I couldn't believe it. But now we're going to go through the rest together. So the first book I got is Their Vicious Games. I've never heard of this book. This is by Joelle Wellington. And let's see, on the back it says, you must work twice as hard to get half as much. Now this, if you've never heard of this saying, is a very popular saying, especially amongst black people in America. So I already know where this is going. But it also says, Adina has known this the entire time she's been on scholarship at the prestigious Edgewater Academy, a school for the uber rich and mostly white New England upper class. It's why she works so hard to be perfect above reproach, no matter what she has to force under the surface. Even one slip can cost her everything, and it does. One fight, one moment of lost control leaves Adina blacklisted from her top choice Ivy League college and any other. Her only choice to regain the future she sacrificed everything for is The Finish, a high stakes contest sponsored by Edgewater's founding family in which 12 young ambitious women with exceptional promise are selected to compete in three mysterious events, the ride, the raid, and the royale. The winner will be guaranteed entry into the fold of the Remington family, whose wealth and power can open any door. But when she arrives at the finish, Adina gets the feeling that something isn't quite right with both the Remingtons and her competition. And soon it becomes clear that this larger than life prize can only come at a greater cost because the finish's stakes aren't just make it or break it, they're life and death. Adina knows the deck is stacked against her. It always has been, but maybe the only way to survive their vicious games is for her to change the rules. This sounds so freaking good. What the heck? Y'all. Shout out to my girl. She knows me so well. Next up is The Couple Next Door. Now I did tell her I really wanted to start getting into thrillers, so I think that's why we got some really good ones here. I also have never heard of this one. Okay. I cannot believe I have boxes of books just waiting for me at home. I love you, Shaughnessy. Thank you so much. <gasps> I know what this is. She's talked about this book so many times on her channel. I just never got the chance to actually read it. This is Honey and Spice. This is a book I've heard so much about, especially from her, but it's basically like a love story, but it's not like a black and white love story. And there is a black couple here, so you love to see it. And it's also written by a black author, so I love that. Oh my gosh, and then she got me. Carrie Soto is back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Now we both love TJR, and the fact that she got me this book is amazing because she doesn't really like literary fiction, and that's like my favorite genre, and she said this was really, really good. So I'm excited to read this. And I got the hardcover. Okay, now her balling out on me. The next one is Black Book. I've never heard of this. Let's see. 
So apparently this book is about Darren. He's a 22 year old who lives at home. He's super content with his life, even though he's really smart. He's kind of living below his means. He's currently working at Starbucks and like visiting his girlfriend Soraya. But then he meets the CEO of a tech startup company. And then he works there as the only black person there. And then from there, he tries to like help other black people in the community infiltrate the American workforce. And it sounds really good. But the thing that got me was this last part here. So once he started working at this new company he changed his name from Darren to Buck which is like completely different from his usual personality he works super hard he's like relentless and trying to succeed and climb the corporate ladder basically so this last part says black buck is a hilarious razor sharp skewering of america's workforce it is a propulsive crackling debut that explores ambition and race and makes way for a necessary new vision of the american dream she knows me this sounds so good and so me i am very excited about this Ooh, same time next summer. I think I've heard of this, but I'm not 100% sure. Let me see. So it says, on paper, Sam's life is on track. She has the perfect fiance, a stable job, and has returned home to pick out a wedding venue near her family's Long Island beach house. The last person she expects to see is Wyatt, her first love and the man who broke her heart. As their irresistible spark continues rushing back, so do the memories of long nights spent in the treehouse and the summer that changed everything. As Sam starts to remember the girl she used to be, she must decide, is the life she's created the one she wants? This sounds good. I like that. I like that there's a mix of like literary fiction and romance because she's a romance girly and I'm a literary fiction kind of girl. And the fact that I have both, amazing. <gasps> fast this is another book she's talked so much about she said it's a little heavy but it's like the type of book that everyone needs to read it's a book that's also written by a black author with a black main character so i just love that she's given me so many books with representation and that's really nice because that's definitely something i wanted to do more this year i feel like i didn't do too much of that last year and that's something we got to fix this year so i'm loving it already all right we got two more <gasps> i got miss frida Frida McFadden's Never Lie. She talks about this so much. She said that this is even better than The Silent Patient. Right. Right. That's how you know it's good. And she also said like she gave it to people who like aren't readers like at her gym and they ate it up in three days. So I'm excited for this. I don't think I've ever read a Frida McFadden book. So this will be my first. Set the bar high. I love it. And the last one is if he had been with me. I think I have this. Hold on. No way I don't have this. Why do I feel like I have this? <gasps> you know why it feels like I had this? It's because every time I go to Barnes & Noble, I always tell myself I'm going to pick it up and I never picked it up. Wow. She gets me. Thank you so much again for all of these books. I cannot believe this girl sent me this many books. Hold on, let's see how many this is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I was sent nine books. I love you. Thank you so much. I cannot wait to read all of them. Ah! I'm so happy, but we cannot take a reading break now. We just read for like an hour at Paris Forget, so we gotta get back to studying. But honestly, I'm fired up. After meeting all of them and coming home to such a nice tree, I'm excited to study. The last thing I want to do is just review a new chapter. It's not technically a new chapter because I already finished Genki 1 textbook, but I want to go through it again because I haven't looked at that chapter for a long time and I feel like I've forgotten a little bit. So I do want to refresh my memory, maybe write some new notes and then review that. And then I feel like I can go to bed confident with how today went and feel really good about going into the next week with this foundation. So let's get going. <laughs>
believe how much we were able to get done today. I feel so good. I feel like I always do this, but genuinely I feel so much better. I think once I can get my feet up under me, then I feel like, all right, I'm not overwhelmed. I have a plan. Let's just follow it now. So if you were also feeling overwhelmed, I hope this video helped you a little bit just to get back on track or to reset. Remember, you are a human being. Take your time. Realize where you're lacking. If it's procrastination, take your time, but make a plan and try to hold yourself accountable because you have these goals for a reason. They're in your heart for a reason. You obviously want them. So go after it for future you. I love you so much. I hope you were just as productive as I was, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.